Hi, my amazing pen friends. It's Jess from My Magical Planner. And today I have a package from Boulay Pens with some fun new supplies, as well as a new pen that I'm so excited to unbox with you guys. So let's go ahead and open this box up. It has been sitting here, I think a week, just because life got busy and things happen. I love how they package their boxes. It's just a really nice, like everything always feels very secure. And especially with their ink samples, like things just feel like they're not going to get in the way. All this crinkly paper out of the way. Oh, this is one of my favorite stickers. I got, I already have this one, so I have two now, which makes me more inclined to use it. <laughs> Because I can be a bit of a sticker hoarder, but I love this one with the cherry blossoms and the pink pen. Just so pretty. They have a bunch of these. And then you always get a little treat in here, a little Tootsie Pop. Love these as well. Usually my kids steal them. <laughs> then, let's see. We have a couple of inks and this is what I meant about their ink samples just I love that they're always in a baggie and they're secure so even if they leak they're not gonna make a mess everywhere so you have those we have my packing stuff there along with like this is a little booklet they always put in their boxes and then let's just pull all this stuff out and We'll talk about some of the things that are in here. Okay, there we go. I said all this off to the side. There we go. <laughs> so let's start with this box because it is directly in front of me. And it's something I've already purchased once from them and I decided to get a second one because I have a pen ink problem. And that is their ink sample holder. I think that's what it's called. I want to say this is around $20, but I can't remember exactly off the top of my head. And the one that I have, I've already filled up. <laughs> with all the samples that I bought, but it's really sturdy. It looks really nice. It works really well for all the ink samples and it just makes everything seem tidier. You're less likely to have your sample vials fall over or anything. So I ordered a second one of these. I think you could probably stack them too. Let's see. Uh, let me pull up the one that I have that's completely full. So this is what it looks like when it's completely full. And you can see just how nicely everything kind of fits in there. Now here's my question. Can you stack them? Oh, you can stack them. So if you wanted to, you totally could stack them. Hmm. That might be convenient in the aspect of just having them all in one location for me. So, but right now they're inside. I have an Ikea desk here and they fit really nicely inside the drawer. And I can now have two of these side by side. So we have that. Next, let's do, let's go over what these are. We're not gonna open them and like use them really today. But I've been saying for a while, I need some ink swatching cards. So I ordered three different brands. I, I think I wanna order, um, if I can get my hands on a few more brands before I do some experimenting with them because I want to sample different brands against each other. But what I have here is kind of the one that I see most people using because I think it's the easiest to get your hands on. And a lot of people like the way that it flips through. And that's the color or color, coloring ink test book. And I want to say there's a hundred sheets in here. Yes. And it's a hundred pound 160 GSM asset free paper. So it's a thicker paper, but it, I like the aspect of being able to fan it out. That has a nice ring to it. You can, you know, reorder them and it's easy. 
So we have one of these to test out in a future video. And then we have the Wearingle ones. Now they have a bunch of these with different designs on them. And I'm, I'm really intrigued by them. So what they are is so they're the ink swatch cards. And this part here is kind of a shiny material. I don't know if you guys can see that. So the ink will not stick in theory to this part. It'll only stick to this middle portion, which you can barely see that looks like this little ink drop. They have a bunch of different designs. Like I said, they have leaves, they have, they just release some fairy ones when the, um, the Peter Pan collection came out. Um, I think there's ink bottles, like they have a bunch of different designs and I thought this would just be an easy one to color in to see. So we have these ones to test out. Then there were the Colorverse ones. I think that's what, they're, yeah, Colorverse. And these are called the Color Space. They have a couple different designs and this kind of combines the idea on these on the Wearingo ones with just a blank card. So let's open them up and I'll kind of show you as best I can what they are. And these ones are bigger. These are, there's only 15 sheets in here. Um, there are three different designs. Let's see, this is the Hubble ones. They're all space designs. You can kind of see it here where they've whited out certain areas. So when you swatch on it, it actually, takes like it looks like a seed so it's more of an art card i think is what they call it um let's see if i can get them out I'm trying not to damage the packaging so i can put them back in the packaging to keep them safe but oh maybe that's so you can kind of see here let's see if i can get the angle right that we have a design just kind of put on there where the ink isn't going to to stick. I don't even know if you can really see it. Like you can see a little bit of the shine there. So this is this end one here. There's ones that just look like they have space elements and like stars. Um, there's ones with quotes. So it's just, I thought it would be a neat experiment to try them out. So we have these ones. And like I said, I'm planning on these being a future video in and of themselves because I want to get as many different types of swatch cards as I can to sample next to each other. If you guys have a specific brand of swatch cards you're interested in, then that would be a value to me. So I can try and get my hands on them before I do that video. So, cause I'm probably going to be placing another order to get the Ferris wheel press ones. To, to, I just want all of the different ones I can side by side because that's the way my brain works. <laughs> now I did order four ink samples when I did this order because I, like I said, I have an ink problem and we will swap these at the very end. So I got knitted nettle from Ferris wheel press, which is a new ink. I think all of these might be new inks. This is Ferris Field Press Aurora, Aurora Alice, I think is how you say it. I believe this is the ink of the year that they did. Then we have Diamine Frosted Orchid. Orchid. Uh, I'm not sure if this was a new one or not, or if it was just a purple one that I was like, oh, that's pretty. And then the other one is Ferris Field Press Storied Blue. This is because of Pens and Tea, which is a channel I watch quite a bit of. She has raved about this particular color, and so I wanted to try it out. So those are the four that we'll be sampling at the very end. Before we get into the new pen, I do have one other thing that I purchased, which is just a standard converter. Nothing really spectacular about it. Um, I did purchase it because of my menu that I currently have, which is a briolette. Um, when I filled this last, I had noticed that I was getting some ink past the little seal here and it was really hard to clean out. 
pretty much looks like the ink I have in here is gone. Oh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just sticking up there. Anyhow, um, I was concerned about that. So I did purchase another converter to potentially swap it out to make sure I am good there. So that is why I purchased that. And I absolutely adore this Banu. So last we have a brand new pin. And if you look at the box, you can see all the different pen types that they have. Um, this stuff I think is the newest type and I don't remember what it's called, but this is like the Banu, um, <laughs> this is like the, um, Briolette one here. And they have these ones with like all of these flowers and stuff on them, which I think are very pretty. I'm concerned about writing with them though. Um, oh, I must've gotten just a teeny bit of ink on my finger when I opened up that pen. <laughs> Sorry. So I have now gotten ink on the box, but you can also see, I think this is maybe a talisman over here. Um, and they have, what is the name of the one that I have here? Can you say on here? Um, Euphoria. Okay. Is the other design that is kind of similar to the talisman, but doesn't like the talismans I think have something inside them, like to have extra qualities or something. So here is the pen, which I love how they do their packaging from the aspect of, I don't feel like I have to really keep this. So I don't want to, I mean, I, it's a very sturdy box. It's really nice, but I also feel like sometimes like I would much rather have this type of box than, um, this type to be honest because this takes up so much space and I feel bad throwing this away even though this is a very cheap plastic one um so I like this better and I feel like it protects the pen really well so this drum roll is our new pen look at how pretty it is it's purple and has these blue flags and the black it is just absolutely gorgeous and it's so so pretty so this is the loves is it love story or love poetry what are we calling it oh french poetry that's what it was and i had seen this and i was like oh my gosh i love that so much and i just I decided I wanted a second Banu. So I purchased one. So I did decide my other one is a fine nib and this one is a medium nib. I wanted to compare the two. Plus I have some really shimmery inks that I think that are in the purple realm that I think would be really nice. Plus I thought that um, knitted nettle might be really nice in here. So this again comes with, I think just a standard converter those look the same pretty much yeah and not a whole lot to say about the inner workings it's you know a, a piston type mechanism in there um the the nib here I think it's bigger than my other nib let's pull it over and look and try not to get ink on my finger again oh yeah much nib bigger so I It'll be interesting to see how the two kind of perform next to each other, but I love how wet this writes and just how easy it is to write with it between my, this and my Estabrook, they, they seem to be the pens that I gravitate to a lot, especially for, you know, larger writing sessions. And I wanted something that was a little longer. I do like the length on this. Let's compare it to a few pens here. So obviously, quite a bit bigger than the briolette here, at least capped. Um, I think a Twisby is always a good comparison. So slightly longer than the Twisby as well. Um, we have the Pilot Vanishing Point right here. So let's see. I think those are pretty, like it's a little bit longer, but not a ton. And let's see about the Astrobrook. These are kind of my top pens that I enjoy writing with. Oh, I think it's pretty, 
The Estabrook is a little bit, just a teeny bit, because it has those more pointed ends, a little bit, I think, taller. But that kind of gives you an idea. And let's kind of zoom in in here a little bit. Sorry about the wobble. And let's look at some of these kind of side by side with caps off. So obviously quite a bit bigger in the nib here. And I love that we have these facets here. So it doesn't roll. It's just there. Where some of these other ones may roll a little bit or I'm afraid they're going to roll. So let's see. Oh, that's quite a bit shorter actually without the cap on. And nib size though is pretty comparable, I think. And then the Twisby. So nib is smaller on the Twisby and it's a little bit shorter. But again, the Twisby also has that faceted edges that I like. So that kind of gives you an idea of the size of the pen. And I love the way it feels, honestly. And it is a Schmidt nib, in case you guys didn't know that. And it has an iridium, iridium, is that right? Point, and you can see the little M there for the medium. And I think you can actually switch these nibs out if you really want it to by, I think they sell just this portion, but don't quote me on that. I know Twisby does for sure. So anyhow, that is my new pen and I will go grab stuff to do ink swatches in my little ink swatch book because we're gonna keep those for a future video. So I will be right back. All right, I've returned with my ink swatching book. So this is just a um, Hobonichi Cousin little notebook that I've been using. It's actually getting pretty full. So I, I have ordered a new one, but essentially how I do my color swatching is I use a pipette to just put a little dot on there. And then I use a bag to spread it out. And then I will use my pilot dip pen here to write out a few things. This is a medium nib to kind of give an idea. So we will start a new page here and Let's. There it is. Now I'm gonna see you got guys back out a little bit there. So I have a just plain extra sheet of paper that I'm gonna slip in here so that I'm not bleeding through onto the next sheet. I only do it on one side. And someone did make the suggestion that I do my swatching on this side rather on the, than on this side because it makes it easier to compare inks if I wanted to. And I think I'm gonna take that into consideration as I'm doing these. So I have my little bucket of, well, bin of water here. I also have just a little cup of water for rinsing out my pipette and my little plastic bag as well as a paper towel. So let's get into this. I think I'm gonna start with storied blue because I think a lot of the other ones may have glitter in them. <laughs> so we'll start with the, the easiest, we'll say. Ooh, that was more ink than I really needed, but that's okay. Oh, no, we're, we're gonna do it on this side. All right, let's spread her out. Oh, I like, <laughs> maybe not that far. I do really like what I'm seeing of this color. It looks really pretty. Kind of like gray toned colors. Am I completely around? Obviously not, because I didn't have my little 
file holder there. So I don't think I need to do that, but we'll do it just in case. And do our little writing over here. Oh, this is Ferris Wheel Press. No, nope, that's another dip. Oop, went too far down. squiggle here and another box and then some lines and that should give you a pretty good idea of what the ink looks like or at least it does for me I really like it it's a really nice blue So we have that one. Next, let's do, yeah, these all have shimmer, don't they? Yeah. So let's do the frosted orchard. Orchid? Orchid. I think it's frosted orchid. Now I do think because the swatch is so big, I am going to do this on the opposite side. It reminds me of the blackberry one that I have. Um, oh gosh, is it Diatriman? No, it's um. Oh gosh, I can't remember what company it is. But a very nice, really gray um, purple there. This one is a diamine ink. Now I will do close ups once these have dried so you can see all the fun qualities of them. Um, and we'll talk about them in more detail then. I just want to get them down on paper first. Oh, I can definitely see the shimmer coming out in this one. It's really pretty. Oh, wow. I think I'm really going to like that one as well. These are all really fun new inks. And I love that you can get like an ink sample for just a couple of dollars. And there's, it lasts so long. Okay, this is Aurora, Aurorealis. Is that how they say it? I want to say Aurora Borealis, but there's no B. <laughs> so, oh, this is a much deeper, more violet type purple, I think. I think we're kind of going from lightest to darkest. So. See how this one spreads. 
I don't want you to go into the story group. You can go up there a little bit, but. Oh yeah, that's a much deeper purple. So I'm gonna shake it again before we do any writing and I can see little bits of pink in there. So pretty. This also reminds me a little bit of Robert Oster's Pink Squirrel. Though definitely more vibrant in color with some shimmer. <laughs> Hold on. Let me shake that one more time. Oh, wow. I'm seeing all the sparkle come out in this one. It is, it is something. This might be the color that I end up putting in the menu, which we'll do at the very end. Oh, I got a bunch on my hand there. So this one is Ferris Wheel Press. So pretty. And then our last one here, let me make sure we're ready to go. And our last one is that Knitted Nettle, which I think is an intriguing color name, honestly. It has a very teal color in here. I was expecting a little bit more green, honestly. But I love me a good teal. very dark. Just looking as I clean out the pipette. <laughs> yeah, definitely a very dark color. Ooh. Oh, I like that. I think the shimmer in this one is more of a gold or copper tone, but I could be wrong. This one's definitely pink as I put my finger in it. This is again Ferris Wheel Press. I think they come out with some amazing colors. I do wonder how they came up with the name for this one though. Knit it nettle. I mean, it's just intriguing to me. This one seems to flow a little bit better, I think, than some of their other inks for me. All right, there are our four colors. I'm gonna let them dry, and then we will come back and do close-ups and talk about the different qualities each one of them has. All right, I think everything is dry. So let's kind of go over these different inks. 
So bleed through. We got a little bit going on here. Not a ton, but a little bit. So not uncommon with ink swatching. I think most of them bleed through, to be honest when we're doing that because it's such a high concentration of ink. But as far as the writing, I don't see any bleed through there. All right. So first we have the storied blue, which if you've never gone to the Ferris wheel presses site to read like the little blurbs they have about their inks, you totally should because they're very well written and they tell like an entire story about, yeah, this is part of their, what do they call it? The bookshop collection. And it's about going into this bookshop and how all the different books and stuff inspire the color. And yeah, it's this whole thing. But anyhow, this is kind of a, they call it a charcoal blue. So it's just a solid blue color and has some shading in there. It looks really pretty. Um, I don't have a whole lot else to say about it, honestly. Um, I love the color variation you got in there. And I think it's a solid, like, I like this color a lot. It's just very classic. Next, we have the Diamine Frosted Orchard. Orchid? Why do I want to say or? Yeah, it's Frosted Orchard. Like the flower, you know. So it's this really kind of faded, that's not quite the right word, muted purple with like the grayish tone purples, you know, and then it has silver shimmer on top of it. This is part of their shimmer-tastic inks, so it is recommended to put that in a broad nib. Um, I have a medium now. Well, actually, I have a broad on order, so maybe we'll save that for that. What else did they say about this? Not a whole lot. But I love the combination of the silver with the purple. I think that's a great, great call. So love that one as well. Then we have the Aurorealis. This, I did look it up. It is their ink of the year. So it is this really deep purple. And you can kind of, like when I turn it this way, you can see the pink. And I don't know if I can get the gold to show up or not. So it's a little harder. Um, uh, pink, pink. But from the angle I'm looking at it, this part that's showing pink actually looks kind of gold to me. So I, I'm sorry I can't get that to show up on the camera though. But what they say about this is it's a, um, luminous violent with diachromatic pink and gold accents in the shimmer. So there will be two releases of this this year. So if you haven't, like they're out of stock someplace, which I have no idea right now. Last I looked, lots of places still had it. So um, know that it's still there. And if it sells out, I think they're going to do another release of it. Um, this is a color I'm thinking about buying a bottle of since it is a limited edition ink. And because I really like it, I want to write with it in a pen first before I do that. So I'm leaning towards inking this one up in my new pen. Then we have the Ferris Wheel Press Knitted Nettle, which is part of their, I think it's Fairy Tales series. And these are all retellings of <laughs> uh, fairy tale stories. So if you go on their site, they do have an entire blurb that tells the story of how the it has to do with Jack and the Beans. Well, is it Jack and the Beanstalk? It's a princess and a beanstalk. I don't know which story it is off the top of my head because I just kind of glanced at it. But it is a dark teal color is what they say with that diachromatic gold pink shimmer. And this one, I, it, I don't know if I can, I can kind of get the gold there. And you can see that pink. It's a really interesting combo. Now, as far as comparisons for these, I did kind of think, well, Emil Shavor for this one, but it's much more blue. And then the Cero, the Cero, the Sailor Dipton um, Mellow Forest is kind of similar, but has different shimmer colors. Um, I don't think there's any other ones that really came like for for whom the bell tolls maybe like a muted down version with more shimmer um 
This one's too blue. Now I think that's pretty much it as far as ones that I thought matched this knitted nettle. Um, as far as the Aurorealis, I don't think I have anything that's even close, to be honest, because I don't have a ton of purple inks. Um, because these are all lighter in color. Oh, I need to do more indexing there. Um, just looking a minute. Yeah, none of these really fit the quality. I think the closest is probably a diamine purple pizzazz but they have different color shimmers and the base is slightly different as well. But I would say that's the close, and those are both shimmer-tastic inks. So as far as the frosted or orchid, I really think pink squirrel is probably my closest, although this is definitely more on the purple end. Um, I don't think I have anything else that even comes close. Oh, Blackberry, but Blackberry is more, it's darker than this. So it does not have a shimmer at all. As far as storied blue goes, I do have a lot of blues, but I don't think I have a blue that is similar to this. Because these are all much bluer in tone and this is more of almost a teal. Um, oh, maybe Tar Heel. Tar Heel looks like it'd be kind of close. Although I think this has more gray and this has more blue in it. But yeah, those are my closest inks as far as color goes. I'm really excited about these new colors. I think they're gonna be fantastic. Um, I'm thinking Knitted Nettle will be a good one to ink up for March because of the greenish tones in it. And you know, St. Patrick's Day and everything, it would be even probably would have been more fitting if it was a deep green with gold and <laughs> just gold for like you know the irish um saint patrick's day aspect but let's go ahead and ink up this new pen so let's do the or aurora alice and i think that's going to be a nice combination and these pens are pretty easy to ink just kind of lower that down in there. Oh, I did not flush this out. Ooh, do I want to flush it out? I probably should. Hold on. Let's get some fresh water and I will flush that out really quick. All right, I went ahead and flushed this out with just some clear water. That way if there's any particulates or if they had tested it with, I want to shake that a little more, I think. Um, that those little particles just aren't going to mess up anything as I ink up a new color. That's the whole theory behind it. Because um, they're going to just be little bits. Okay, let's, let's see how we do here. Do I have it down far enough? I don't think so. It's a little hard to figure that out sometimes. Oh, I see stuff coming up, but it's... I think we need to... Definitely have it to the side. That is the one disadvantage with a large nib and a sample vial. Is sometimes you get more air in there than you would like. So let's, let's try one more time. And I do, I think I ordered a little, there we go, that's perfect. I don't need a full fill. So, do you want to kind of wipe off, especially around the base here, just to make sure we're good? Get that part right on. Stain my finger. Check. So I'm just placing that over the tip there as I put the top on here. And just grab a little notebook that I have here and we'll do some test writing. So 
So this is just, oh gosh, this is a Claire Fontaine. Um, just really simple little book. So let's see here. Oh, smooth writer right off the bat. So I am curious on the line width. So let's do an do A, B, C, and then I'm gonna pick my other Banu up, which I absolutely adore how fine this writes and how wet it writes. And let's do an ABC right underneath of it. Oh yeah, you can totally see the difference in the pen width. So check that out. It writes so smooth. Yeah, I'm super happy with this purchase. I do think I'm going to struggle a little bit just with the aspect of using my Tomo River grid because it's such a small grid. So it's going to have some adjustment to that, but loving, loving this new one. So anyhow, that's everything for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and until next time, I'll see you real soon.